Heplink's new Max BR1 Pro Category 20 Blazing Fast mobile router is here. Mobile Must Have is one of the only dealers currently shipping this device. Come along with us and we'll tell you all about it. Thanks for joining us guys. And as you can see here, if you look at the Category 20 uh, Max BR1 Pro here, it looks a lot like the BR1 Pro 5G that we covered a little while ago and we'll link to that video here. That's primarily because it is mostly the identical product to the 5G, um, with the exception that it does not support 5G bands. It does support all, just about all of the latest, or all of the latest 4G bands, however, and it comes at a price point that is significantly less than the 5G counterpart. If 5G isn't necessarily that important to you, or if you've been following kind of the developments of the 5G networks, and you you sort of know that in many rural areas, 5G is not really gonna do much for you at this point, and the technology is still evolving tremendously and may change over time, this may be an investment that's a little bit safer and a little bit easier on your wallet than going with the 5G counterpart. So you might have read in the news recently that AT&T, as of February 22nd, 2022, great date pick, guys, they have turned down their 3G networks permanently nationwide. Why am I mentioning 3G? Well, because 3G be became predominant a long time ago and it took them until 2022 to turn down that network. Now, when we look at 4G and how absolutely critical LTE and 4G is to the national network, we can pretty safely say that 4G is here to stay for at least five and probably 10 years to come. Now that's a bold statement, but it is based in reality, in fact, based on what happened to 2G, 3G, and what we're seeing in terms of the development of 5G nationally. As 4G kind of enters its final phase of new development, as they focus more on 5G, what we're finding with 4G is that it's stable. It works very well, and the networks are using it primarily to communicate uh, with mobile devices and to get their customers up on the internet. It works incredibly well because it's been around for a long time and most of the bugs are worked out. Moving on to what's in the box, uh, it's a pretty standard complement for a PepWave device. So we've got our PepWave router. We have a GPS antenna that uh, is the only antenna that will come with a cable lead. I believe that's a six foot lead that's attached to that. We have four cellular antennas and two Wi-Fi antennas. We also have a power adapter, and this uses the new four pin Molex power plug. Um, they have gone away from using the direct wire in this modem, but we have sourced direct wire Molex connectors if you want to wireless directly into a 12, 24, or 36 volt system. They've also included a nice little Peplink branded uh, wire management roll here with their uh, kind of signature color, um, which is kind of a nice touch as well. Lastly, they have updated their quick start guide, which we requested that they do. Uh, it has upgraded imagery as well as pictures that include the difference between SMA and RPSMA adapters. A lot of people get confused by these because the Wi-Fi antennas are missing the center pin that people are used to seeing with these coax type connectors. The reason why they're missing is because they're actually located on the router itself. They reverse those pins so that you can't mix up the Wi-Fi and the cellular antennas. They've covered that in the quick start guide now. It's really a guide just to get everything out of the box and plugged in. But if you purchase from mobilemusthave.com, don't worry, we've got you covered with extensive setup guides to get you from out of the box to up and running. Man, that sunlight is coming out. Let's add some shade so that you can actually see me. Moving on to the modem inside of this device, it has a blazing fast two gigabit per second, max download speed and a max upload speed of 211 megabits per second. It's a very fast modem. It supports all of the latest LTE bands that are really important and popular for each of the cellular carriers. And again, if you're looking for band specific information, 
look at the listing page, click on that documentation tab, and that will have all of the band information. But the big bands that you're going to want to think about, like for AT&T, you're looking at band 14, which is the first net band, or on T-Mobile, you're looking at band 71, which is their rural band, are all included in this modem. It is super fast. In testing, we are seeing that it's more than capable of delivering speeds north of 100, 150 megabits per second. Almost always you're limited by the cell tower or the data plan, not by this device. If you're interested in detailed specifications on this device or any of our devices, go to the listing page of the device and click on the independent analysis tab on that device. That will link you over to gear guides or guides from our partners at the Mobile Internet Resource Center that will give you detailed specifications on the device. For those of you who don't know, the Mobile Internet Resource Center is, in our opinion, the gold standard for all things mobile internet, and they've been around for quite a while, providing information to members and to the public about just about everything mobile internet. All right, so let's move on to the physical aspects of this modem and kind of the business end of, of, of this device, and there are, there are two of them. Starting with this side, we've got our antenna ports, um, and these are our cellular antenna ports and our GPS antenna port. These are all SMA connectors, one, two, three, four on the cellular, and then GPS at the end. Note that this is different than the transit devices which put the GPS in the middle. And I know that when I was just kind of moving real quick and not looking carefully, I actually hooked up a cellular antenna to the GPS and then started troubleshooting and found out that was why I was having some issues with speed. So make sure you read those labels if you're interested in picking up this device or the 5G because they share the exact same chassis. Um, the BR1 Pro 5G. Over here we've got our SIM card slots. These are injection spring-loaded SIM card slots and I'll show you a little example of how they work here. Uh, they are they work basically identically to the previous generation with one exception which is that they are um, going to utilize nano size SIMs which are much smaller than the 2FF standard size SIMs. All SIM cards sold by uh, mobile must have com for our data plans or just sims if customers want to purchase them at checkout are going to be tri-cut sims that will have all of the sizes available nano is the smallest currently and 2ff or full size is the largest um, so you just want to make sure you don't put a small sim into a bigger device but for this device you're at the smallest size already so that's not going to be a problem a quick note on sim cards just because it does come up when people purchase and they uh, don't see it in our instruction videos is that you want to always make sure that the notch side of that SIM card is going in to the modem first and that the uh, chip side or the metal side of the SIM is always facing in the direction of the other SIM slot. So if it's SIM A, the metal is going to face downwards. If it's SIM B, the metal is going to face upwards. Uh, notch always in first. There is a dust cover that I'm not showing you here that's also included with this device. Moving on to the other side of the device, we have our RP, reverse polarity, uh, SMA connectors for Wi-Fi. And if you look at the antennas for Wi-Fi, they will say Wi-Fi right on them so there's no confusion. Uh, make sure you don't mix up the Wi-Fi and the cellular antennas. Uh, we've got our two Wi-Fi antennas, and this is Wi-Fi 6 technology. And it also, with Wi-Fi 6, can potentially improve battery life with devices that support newer um, Wi-Fi 6 technology and it can also help with density if you're in a very dense campground with a lot of Wi-Fi signal Wi-Fi 6 can help out with that interference it also has a higher maximum throughput again you can check out the uh, documentation tab on the listing for a full detailed spec sheet from the manufacturer or you can click on the independent analysis tab, which will give you links to our gear guides with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and they will cover Wi-Fi 6 inside of those articles. Uh, moving on, we have two LAN ports here, and these are for connecting your local area network devices, like a, um, a smart TV potentially that you want to hardwire in, or a desktop computer. That's very common. We don't want to typically work on a wireless connection. If we can prevent it, it does work, but we can get a lot of that bandwidth off of our network if we can wire in the connection. So it's nice that they've added two ports in here up from the transit line that only had one. And then we have an assignable WAN port. And what assignable WAN means is you can use it as WAN, which means it can be used as an additional input internet connection. And this port is a 2.5 gigahertz port. We'll get into that in a minute but specific 
to assignable WAN, you can assign this port to an additional LAN port for local devices. And with that 2.5 uh, gigabit speed on that port, you can start to take advantage of some super fast wireless access points like the AP1AX that has a 2.5 gigabit uplink port. Moving on, we've got our status lights here. We've got status, Wi-Fi, and cellular. Um, these are nice lights to have. Your status light will remain solid green when the modem is operational. Wi-Fi can blink when the Wi-Fi is on. And then your cellular will remain solid when you're connected to the cellular network, or it will blink if it's trying to connect, or it will turn off completely if the cellular modem has been disabled. This can come in really handy for folks that want to get kind of a quick glimpse or status of what's going on with their internet connection without going into the dashboard. This gives you some basic functionality to know what your connection is looking like. Lastly, we've got our power port here, and this is our four pin Molex port that Peplink is moving to on most of their newer devices. Now, we include an AC adapter here for the four pin Molex, but you may notice that they've done away with the direct wire green sort of terminal input that gave us direct wire power access. That can be somewhat troublesome, troublesome for folks that don't want to cut this cable. Um, I wouldn't really want to cut that cable. I'd want to have it as a spare if I went into a hotel room or something else. But not to worry, we've sourced four pin uh, Molex power adapter, fuse powered adapters. So they've got the three amp fuse needed for this modem and they will plug right into there and then you can wire those directly up to DC power. And those are available as an option at checkout, either with our bundles, which it's included in, or if you're just picking up the modem on its own, you can select that power cord as well. All right, so let's talk about Starlink or the future of Starlink and how you can integrate them into Peplink routers. Starlink, where's the Starlink? <laughs> There's my Starlink. <laughs> now, uh, this is where really we wanna talk about uh, kind of what you can do with this modem outside of just the integrated category 20 modem. And all of this information would also apply to the VR1 Pro 5G as well. Now, let's talk about that WAN port and specifically that we can uplink secondary internet connection devices like a Starlink into this WAN port. Now, I wanna be honest with you guys, you know, we're not Starlink experts, but we do travel with Starlink and we follow the Starlink news quite a bit through the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So if you wanna know more about Starlink, check out the Starlink guide below. But the kind of gist of what we wanna tell you about Starlink is it's something that's up and coming and very interesting, just like all internet connectivity in innovations, but no single one connection is really ever going to be your only connection. I've been in this business for 20 plus years, wired internet, wireless internet, satellite internet, every internet you can come up with. And I've always told my customers the exact same thing, which is there is no single connection that is going to be reliable because it's not redundant. So you wanna always look at at least two connections possibly more in your arsenal if you consider internet mission critical. All right, I've done my best to tell you one thing is not the perfect answer. Now, moving on to Starlink, let's assume this becomes a connection source that's reliable and is working nationally. It's not there currently, but we think it's coming. As of right now, if I get my dish working, I can typically stay connected for 90%, 95% of the time in a one hour period. Um, it does get tricky with Zoom calls and other stuff, but it's really cool when it works and it's one of multiple connections that come into my Peplink device. We're gonna do an extensive article on uplinking Starlink and kind of how that all works. But for right now, we want to just give you the kind of high level specs on this modem and this WAN port to give you an idea of why it may be a fit if you're interested in future proofing for Starlink. This router has a max throughput if you're looking at a bonded connection through speed fusion of 400 megabits per second unencrypted or 200 megabits per second encrypted. You don't really need to encrypt internet traffic, but speed fusion cloud encrypts it by default and you can't turn it off. So 200 megabits is an important number, but 400 megabit speed on speed fusion with a tiny compact device like this is a huge number if you're gonna start looking at possibly combining it with multiple cellular connections um, or with something like Starlink into this WAN port because the router is capable of handling quite a bit more throughput than previous generation models. To give you an idea, um, 
like the Transit series, the Duos that were very popular and are still very popular and are great modems, um, those have a max throughput of 50 megabits encrypted and 100 megabits unencrypted. Still plenty fast, and we love that for a dual modem capable device, but if you're seriously considering Starlink and a single modem device, this is a great option and choice for you because of that faster processor. The Max BR1 Pro Category 20 is currently shipping at mobilemusthave.com and is included in our new Speed Demon VR2, stands for version 2, bundle that is currently available. Now there are two versions of the Speed Demon bundle. There's the Speed Demon VR2 that includes this modem, and then there is the Speed Demon 5G, which includes the 5G variant of this modem. Both are great. It just really depends if you want to look at 5G now or put that off for future. To give you more information about our bundles, basically what we do is we include the accessories that typically would be required for RV use to maximize the experience with the device. That typically includes a roof antenna that will give you cellular and Wi-Fi transmission and receiving from the roof so that you can pick up campground Wi-Fi and cellular from that single roof antenna and greatly improve your cellular performance, a direct wire DC power cable, and a cellular uh, mobile router like this one. If you hop over to our store and you click on the bundles page, you will see a comparison chart that will give you details of all of our bundles and the differences between them if you're interested in learning more about our internet bundles. Now, bundles also will get you 5% off the total package price of all of those devices if you were to purchase them individually. So bundles will save you some money. And lastly, if you look at our membership page, as I mentioned before, that will stack on top of the bundle discount to give you an even larger discount. Thank you so much for checking out the Peplink Max BR1 Pro mobile router. We are super excited to be having this ready to ship today. It has been fully tested by us and we think it's a great product. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you on the road.